We had very little to do. I don't even remember what I did. I think we were just bees. So I had no lines. And it's also hard to really be aware of an audience other than the one that's in the studio. And there were maybe 300, if that. Uh, so I can't say that I was, but there were other times when I certainly was. And getting used to cue cards was, you know, I mean, it only took once though, because seeing a performance where I'm like this the whole time was really disappointing. So I got better at it. But it was, did you rely on the cue cards a lot because the scripts would change? Or? Yeah, they would change between dress and air. Absolutely. You're prepared in the sense that you know where to go, you know you're blocking, you know what's going on in the scene, you know your character. We're prepared in the sense that everything we had done in the Groundlings or Second City or whatever company we came from, we were prepared. This is exactly what we did. We did our sketch, we ran off stage, we changed his costume, the lights are out, you come back, you take your place, the lights are up, you go. That's exactly what we did and that's exactly what the show was. Pretty much, unless you weren't in the next scene for several sketches, um, and you, you know you get used to doing that kind of work on the show as well. So you get used to reading cue cards, and you get used to where the camera is, and you get used to where the cue cards are. And so, yeah, we were prepared. We got that prepared. And when you went out to, on on the stage for that first episode. Had the cast already bonded at that point? Did you feel like you were a cohesive unit? It's hard to remember. I mean, I don't know exactly at what point we really became a bonded cast. Uh, the dressing room, where we actually had costumes fitted and everything, there was just like a sheet separating us. And the guys were not modest at all. You know, Danny and John would just walk around in their underwear all the time. Which was very endearing, I have to say. Uh, it was kind of primitive. The first host was George Carlin. Mm -hmm. Did you have any sketches with him? No, none of us did. Again, it's, it's interesting to see some of those early sketches because we certainly didn't have our format for a while. We didn't have uh, certainly the way the show is structured today and even, you know, the first, God, I would say seven or eight shows and we had the Muppets which was a whole other element that made the show um, really different than once they were not there it, I think it really got together as the show that it is and I think the Muppets were there because Bernie Brillstein who manages Lorne also managed the Muppets but I think that the tone of the show didn't fit in with puppets even though I love the Muppets, you know. And even though they were darker. Yeah, they just weren't dark enough. Did you feel that it was, a, was the mandate at the time was to be really edgy and dark? Well, again, I don't think that there was a self-conscious effort to be anything other than what made us laugh. Right. Um, how do you think that first show went? Well, I know how I felt, you know, we had a, a sketch, this was my first introduction to, you know, uh, the kind of disappointment that Lorne must have felt because they cut a sketch of Alexander the Great's high school reunion that was hysterical and I wasn't even in it, but I was so disappointed that they cut it because it was so funny and George Carlin was in it. And I couldn't understand why they cut it. I mean, to this day, I don't understand why they cut it. But, you know, that's, they were still kind of finding their way. Do you think that George Carlin was prepared for what he got into that first night? Well, I've talked to his daughter, and I know that she told me that Although he really loved the idea of the show, he really just thought he was there to do his act. You know, he didn't really know where he fit in. So that's what he did. So when that first show ended that night, what did you do after? There was a party at some dark restaurant, and I remember Paul Simon being there, and 
I was really excited. I couldn't believe it. And, you know, I just, we were all there. And I thought, wow, is this how it's going to be? And, and then I went back to my apartment that was like complete with like the flashing neon sign outside the window. And, oh, I was just having such a tough time, you know, adjusting to New York. Of course, I had all my belongings stolen. And I was in this place that was temporary until I could get into the place I was going to settle in. And, oh, I really, you know, and I, you know, Gilda was my only friend at that point, And I was homesick. I really was. Even though I, I, I was excited about doing the show, I was homesick. 